I'm using the cheapest servos I could find. They cost two dollars and two cents each. Uh, Turnergies from Hobby King, and the easiest way I could come up with to actuate the server is to use a one and a half millimeter uh, piece of steel through, and there's a little aluminium plate I cut out of one mil alley little hole in the middle to match the size of the tube and the servo literally wiggles it from side to side. I ended up going that route because if I was to fit servos on the track then it would start eating into track space and if you've got lots and lots of points in close proximity um, they're all going to start falling over each other. Also using this method I'm using the existing hole in the Pico points to operate them so I don't need to modify it in any way whatsoever. OK, I have a demonstration ready here. So we've got the new board installed. There we go. And that's hooked up onto the track. All the cables disappearing underneath it. Look. I'm currently powering that from a 12 volt battery here. And connecting to the board is a little switch panel here. And this has four connections, two for power and two for data. So we've got yellow and purple for data here, and they'll control the logic of the signals uh, and the uh, points. So what we have are five potential sidings or pieces of track, and they're numbered from left to right from one to five. So let's bring this over. So as I press a button, one to five, it will set the uh, track using the logic one should take it over and you can see it set the first set of points and the engine would run all the way to number one which is on the left if I hit the second button you can see the lights change it would take the second from the left third fourth and number five is straight ahead. And as you can see, with the good yard signals, you get the correct signalling. Let's do that again. I hit number four. And straight ahead. Here's number three. And number two. And number one with the correct signalling. So it's all handled by an inexpensive little chip. And there's another one on the control panel that's yet to be designed. So the reason we've used a, a separate processor here and a network connection is so that we can drive lots and lots of um, LEDs from, from a suitable control panel. This really is just to test it with the sidings 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 being straight ahead. So literally you press the button and the logic determines the route to set the signals and the points. To set the endpoints, that's built in. There's there's three programming buttons just here. So we'll see in this light. So I can set the endpoints for any any set of points just by toggling through. Press the middle button, and it'll put the points into programming mode. You can see the lights flashing, and then as I push through, it'll move through the various ones 
into programming mode. And to set the endpoints, you literally press either of the left or the right hand buttons until you get the movement you desire and then move on through the rest if you do nothing. And there's a test as well, so when it's out of programming mode you can move everything one way and everything the other way. And now we're back on the logic. One, two, three, four, five. 